I'll be tying the doculator today. As you can see from the image, I've tied this in three colors, orange, red, and yellow, which I'll be tying today. I had a customer ask for these in size 16s and 18s. I did a little bit of research and found that they were available in size 12s and 14s. So I had to do a little bit of practice in order to get them smaller sizes. I'll be using a Daiichi 1720, and this is a three extra long hook. Tying it with the Danville 70 denier, and it's yellow. I'll start the thread on the hook. Go down about halfway. I'll be using some tinsel for the ribbing. This is Vivas, and the color is H06, and it's a small size. I attach it with a loose wrap, and then pull down so I don't need to trim those, the butt ends. Make touching turns. And I found that if I just go around a little bit past the straight part of the shank. For the foam, I'm just using a two millimeter. This is yellow. I've cut a strip off of it. And it's about the same width as the gape of the hook. And I'm going to just trim this at an angle so I can tie it on. And I found that if I, I'll make a loose wrap and then tight wraps. After I tied a couple of these, I noticed that a, there's a tendency to tie it as you start to wrap it it will come forward a little bit and you want to make sure that it's back far enough on the hook. So I'll make kind of a loose turn here and then pull down tighter and you can notice how that compresses. And you can do them, um, make these um, overlapping just a tiny bit. And the, the foam will either push the thread up or you can move it forward. Once I get to the front, just behind the eye, I'll take a couple of tight wraps here. And now I need to make a hole so I can pull it over the eye of the hook. And for that, I'll use my bodkin. I'll pull this tight just a little bit. And then using that hole, push it into the, just over the eye of the hook. And then I'll make sure that that's secure. So when I pull it forward, this is going to be the head of the fly. Now I'll bring the tinsel forward in five or six turns. And I'll tie it off with three wraps of thread. And I found that if I'll make one wrap, one turn in front of the material, if I bump it, it doesn't have a tendency to unravel. For the wing, I'm using just some bleached deer hair. I'll select some. And I'll hold it by the, by the tips 
and get over my garbage can and remove the fuzz. So I have this remaining. And I'll put that into my hair stacker. Remove it. The tips are now aligned. I'll just pull the fuzzies out. And a technique I've used on these, I want to trim this before I actually tie in the deer hair. So I'm making a visual observation of where my thumbnail is. And I will trim those. And then I'm using flat thread. And I'll make a couple of turns and pull down and then release and make sure that's where I want it and it is. So I'll take a few more, generally five wraps, and then pull the foam over the top. And I don't want to pull it tight. I want a bulbous head, so I'll just release it a tiny bit and make a couple of wraps and then secure it and then hold the deer hair up a little bit and the foam and then take kind of spiral, spiraling wraps backwards. And this is going to make the base for your hackle. Hold the foam up, trim it, and that will provide a little bit of a strike indicator for you. I've already prepared a grizzly hackle. You notice that I've pulled out some of the fibers. I'll make a loose wrap in one turn over the top, one turn behind. Oops, that slipped, so let me put a little more pressure on it. One wrap behind, and then holding that back, one, two, three, four wraps, and that secures it in place. It's interesting how that wrap behind the hackle will actually secure it and make sure it doesn't slip. And now I'll take a few turns Use four turns, hold the hackle up, bring my thread straight up, bring the hackle forward, and put a wrap in. And what that does is it opens up the fibers, like my fingers. And you can put your thread through there without trapping down many of the fibers. I use three turns to secure the hackle. I'll trim it and then use a five turn whip finish. And just touch the thread with your scissors. And there is the doculator in a size 16. So let me tie one, one size smaller. It takes a little bit different technique that I found. Put the hook in the vise. This time, I'm using a size 18, a Daiichi 1260. This happens to be a two extra long 
hook. Again, I'm using the same thread. I'll start behind the eye, go down part way, and then back up. What I found on a size 18, I couldn't use the same technique. The foam was just too thick in order to wind it forward. So what I've done is to use a, come up with a different technique in order to have a smaller piece of foam as I bring it forward for the body. So what I've done was just put a hole in the foam. This is going to serve as the head. And I've brought this under, or turned it upside down, and I'll make a couple of wraps here. And I'll spin that. So this is the piece that will form the head. I'll trim the foam at an angle in order to tie it down. And this has a tendency to spin a little bit, so just make sure that you secure it. I'm about halfway down. I'm using the same, the same tinsel. And I'm always twisting my thread clockwise on the right hand tire. And so that flattens it. And if you notice that if I do it enough, then as I bring it up and over, the thread is actually loose as I bring it and it doesn't jump too much forward or back. Again, rather than trimming, I just pulled it down. I'm putting the, tying down the tinsel on the far side. Again, I'm going around the bend of the hook just a tiny bit. I'm using the same foam, but I found out, found that the two millimeter is thick, and so I've just I've just trimmed a very small piece compared to this is what I use for the size 16. You can see the difference. I'm going to notice I have flat thread; it just goes around the hook without jumping forward. I'm just going to use touching turns to secure it. Trying to tie that thread down or the foam down with the thread. And then I'll wrap forward. Now if you pull this too tight, it will break. And I also found that varying amounts of or different size two millimeter foams have different stretching abilities. So you'll need to find out where the breaking strength is. So we'll just again make that a loose, little bit of a loose wrap and then start to bring it forward. And you can overlap it a little bit. I'll continue just behind the, the eye. I like to tie them off underneath. Again, I'll use three wraps. There's two, there's three, and then one in front, just in case I bump my bobbin holder, I don't release everything. I'll pull, a little, put a little bit of pressure on the foam and in order to cut it. And I'll bring my tinsel forward. And we'll create the rib. I'll 
I'll tie it off with three turns of thread. One in front. And trim. Using the same bleach steer hair. And I'm going to clean that deer hair over the waist receptacle. And we'll stack it. This time I'm going to going to have my deer hair a little bit longer just to show you if you have a problem. I really like this technique of being able to, to measure and cut. So you don't have to, as you tie in your deer hair, and then go back and make a lot of trims. But the question is, what happens if it's too long or too short? Well, too, too short, you have to start over. But I'm purposefully going to make this too long. So let's assume that I thought I was in the right place. I'll make two turns and pull up, and another one just to secure it. And then I'll take my fingers back and off. And I'll go, oh, that's too long. OK, so I will fix it by removing my wraps. I'll remeasure. And I'm going to cut right there. And the other technique I'm using, um, actually pushing down on the deer hair so it's, it's closer to the shank of the hook. Two wraps, pull tight, and I make five more wraps. And that's exactly where I want it. And you notice that it's on top of the hook and the right length. So I really encourage you to practice this in order to apply your deer hair. And you can use the same technique in elk hair caddis, deer hair caddis. I use this in my sparkle duns. It creates a beautiful head. So practice and you'll like that. And I'll pull this, the foam back. Again, I don't want to make it too tight. And I'll make a wrap. I've got a nice round head and then continue making open wraps and I will trim the foam on top creates a little bit of a strike indicator and now I've got my size 18 hackle I'll use the same technique. I flatten my thread so I don't, it doesn't bump all over the place. One wrap in front, one wrap behind, and two, th three wraps will secure it. I'll take my hackle pliers and begin wrapping. For a size 18, I use three wraps. There's two, there's three, and actually coming up on the bottom, that's three and a half wraps, which ends up being four wraps on the bottom. Bring my thread up, pull the hackle forward. It opens up the fibers that I get my thread. I'm not trapping down any of those extra fibers. And I've got one wrap on it, and I release my hackle pliers. And as long as you keep it tight, it won't splay out and come off. So those are three wraps again. And we'll trim. I've trimmed it on my side. And now we'll use a whip finish.
I'm using a four turn whip finish there. And I will trim. And I've got a couple of fibers I'll trim out of the way. And there you have a size 18 doculator. And I've not fished these, but I think I might give one a chance. These look in this color combination, it looks like uh, a yellow jacket that might be effective on some streams during the summer. So I hope you like that. Please press like and subscribe to my Riverkeeper YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time.